join us at a pivotal moment in our 999 playthrough, episode 65. Ace has just left, taking Clover hostage. Uh, not Clover. Lotus. I always get them confused. They're both flower things. And... What's her face? It just collapsed again. So please, please save Lotus. Think about what Ace has already done, Junpei. When he's got what he needs from Lotus, you really think he's just gonna let her walk away? Yeah, it's true. Well then just kill her now. Damn it. Save the hassle. You guys go on ahead. As soon as June starts feeling better, we'll follow you. Go! Ugh. Junpei looked at June. Huh. She nodded once. She couldn't manage much more. It was all the confirmation Junpei needed. His resolve was set. I will be curious to go back through all the past episodes and see if I actually guessed Ace. I didn't, like, st I didn't stop and guess right before, like, he brought everyone. I probably could have. I probably should have, but oh well. I like to believe at one point I suspected him. I suspected everyone, so that doesn't count. Um, but that's what this last place is for. Yeah, all right. Come on, Seven. We're going after Ace. Clover? Time. Hell yeah! Santa, you take good care of June. I'm Sorry. trusting you. Clover's dead. I just forgot that. Got it. Santa nodded. Junpei turned before he had a chance to change his mind and started running towards the door. He could hear Seven's heavy footsteps Let's behind go. him. Junpei and Seven exploded into the hallway, their feet pounding the metal door as they ran. I can't wait for this, like... I, I have an entire episode for this. And I'm just gonna, like, run into the room 9. And he's like, I told you not to follow me. And I just get shot in the face. Oh. Ah, all the places. Seven had finally arrived at the church, exhausted and out of breath. As their lungs struggled to catch their breath, their eyes frantically scanned the room. Where are they? Oh god, they're already going on there. I don't see them. Wait, me and Seven? Me. So we need six. So me and June. Sorry, Santa. You think they already went through? He reached up to wipe a palm full of sweat from his brow. Maybe. Even as he spoke, Junpei was already on his way to the larger of the number nine doors. Let's check the red. Vacant. Display panel red vacant. He spun around and headed towards a smaller door. So I'd tell them if Ace and Lotus had moved to another room. Engaged. It's occupied. Oh, they got engaged. But yeah, I feel like both Snake and Ace took the smaller door. And the smaller door is in the intro, which I didn't realize until only late on. Which means there's, there's, there has to be some difference between the doors. That means Ace and Lotus went through here. Oh, unless you check the map. Yeah, it seems like it. I'm sure if I check the map, I'd be able to see where it leads. Junpei and Seven stepped away from the door. They retreated to the center of the room and began to talk. What do we do now? Yeah, what should we do? Well, the big door is still vacant, but the two of us can't do anything with it. We need yeah, June. not even counting how our digital route isn't nine. Just then, as I was pondering what to do next. Oh god, there it is. There was a noise. A noise like someone hitting a thick wooden panel. What's that sound? Junpei looked up, surprised. Seven followed suit, his eyes jumping around the room looking for the source of the sound. Is it the real snake? Is this the real snake? It's coming from over there! It wasn't long before they found the altar. But more precisely, what was on it? The coffin! I still have the code 14383421. Yeah. Let's open it! How? By force! I don't okay. think that's gonna happen. That doesn't work. Well, you never know till you try, right? 
The only necessity for success is the willingness to suffer 1,000 failures. Okay, bloody philosopher. Who said that? Me. Uh, I forget. Who does? Okay, I want to look this up. Who does actually say? Because this might have a, I don't know, not a clue, but the only necessity for success is the willingness to suffer 1,000 failures said by Junpei, I guess. All that comes up is zero escape stuff. Anyway, we've got to try. Junpei and Seven leapt at the coffin. They grabbed hold of what purchase they could find and pulled. Damn it! See? Didn't I tell you? If you could just pull it open, why would it have something like that? Huh. Seven pointed at a keypad on the right. side of the coffin. So unless I put in the right passcode, it's not gonna open. Do do the thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. The noise hadn't stopped. In fact, it continued. It had only gotten louder and more forceful. What were they supposed to do, Junpei wondered? Is there some sort of clue somewhere? Oh, no. Okay, here it is. Don't you dare say to be continued. Ah! <gasps> they stood there for a few moments, staring at the coffin, and then Seven spoke. My prediction is... I have the code now. I open it. But it doesn't matter because I don't have all the information. I then send the code across time and space to the other. And when I'm thinking there, that's the unlock. And then I'm like, oh, I want to try this random number I just thought of. Anyway, they stood there for a few moments, staring at the coffin. And then Seven spoke. Hey, Junpei. I remember you mumbling about some weird numbers over by the bathroom in the first class cabin. Yeah, baby. You got those numbers by solving the secret message Clover was holding, right? One, four, three, eight, three, four, Truth two, one. gone. Or something like that. Right, had left. Yeah, that's right. What about it? Well, maybe that number's the passcode for this thing, too. <sighs> Come on, that's impossible. You think? Those numbers were the code to unlock that safe. Could be two things. Yeah, but the person who set up that safe in this coffin is the same person, right? Zero set up both of these. Yeah, probably. Well, then they might have set the same passcode for both of them. That's ridiculous. Why don't you just try it? I mean, it's not like you'll make things any worse. He makes a point. It'd just be a waste of time. There's no way they're the same number. But what else are you supposed to do? How do you know that? You never know until you try. Yeah. The only necessity for success <laughs> is the willingness to suffer a thousand failures. Oh my god, who said that? <laughs> That's a really good line. Who said that? <laughs> you. Aww. <sighs> Fine. He knelt down in front of the keypad and looked at it. Please make me put it in. Perhaps because he'd repeated them so many times before, the numbers came easily one, four, to Junpei's three, eight, three, four, two, one. Yep. Quickly, he typed them in. Two. One, four, three, eight. Three, four, four two, one. Check that they'd entered the right numbers. Took a breath, pressed the E button. Did it say anything upside down? Is Heb? Wait, it might. Sh Shebe. Sh if you don't count the ones, well, Ishebel, Ishebel, upside down. Leon. It only took a moment. <gasps> what? Y you gotta be kidding me. Called it, ladies and gentlemen. I called it. I don't call many things in this game, but I certainly have called it. There was a click. Oh no. Snake? With a heavy clunk, the lid of the coffin slid off onto the floor. Why would it be Snake, but if he's running around doing stuff? Did Snake swap places with whoever's in here, or what? Someone sat up from inside. My money's on Snake, because who else would it be? <gasps> snake! Called it! Oh my god, I called it. Oh my word. How very interesting. You? Why? Ah, those voices. Junpei and Seven, unless I'm mistaken. Why am I happy to see Snake? Snake is zero. Where are the others? Are they elsewhere? Yeah, they're right behind me. 
was, there was no reason Snake would have known anything about what anyone else would be. Uh. Um, wait, does he specifically say Clover? No. Junpei and Seven looked at one another. There was a great deal he needed to know, but... They had to tell him something, however, so they began to talk. Snake explained to them how they came to be locked in the coffin. Apparently he'd been hit with some knockout gas. Okay, Ace. And Junpei and Seven explained what had happened to the rest of them. Hmm, I see. I believe I got the gist of everything. Yeah, I feel like I've seen a sprite of Snake in these robes. Which is like just enough to spoil it. Wait. What symbol is that? That's that's the Mercury symbol he's got, hasn't it? It's the uh, the lotus. The uh, the the female with horns. Have I been sufficiently caught up? No, that was one thing they kept from him. That was one thing, however, that neither Seven nor Jinpei could bring themselves to say. That Ace had killed Clover. They feared that if Snake knew, he might as well go insane. <laughs> they decided as much as by a look of the moment, the Snake had climbed out of the coffin. That still doesn't explain why you were trapped in here. We've still got no clue about Zero's true identity, let alone why the hell he's doing all this. Oh, I'm Zero. Why did he put Guy X in Snake's clothes? Is all this stuff somehow related to that notary game that was played nine years ago? Hmm. Hey, Snake, do you know anything? Yes, I was on the ship. Chimpei put the question to Snake. His answer was less than illuminating. Um, what are you talking about? I apologize, but I have no idea what you're saying. What? It seemed as though Snake was perhaps not being entirely honest. With that knowledge, did Chimpei and Seven Little Guy? Oh, come on, just tell us if you know. I don't know what to tell you. How can I know something I don't? No matter how many times they asked, he insisted that he knew nothing. It was becoming clear that Snake wouldn't give in. Every second they spent asking him was a second wasted. This is bad. We're running out of time. Do you still have your bracelet? Ah, that wouldn't do us good. We need to go after Ace. However, they stood in silence, the overpowering atmosphere of the chapel almost stifling. One second. Snake? Um. Santa. Junpei. June 7. Damn. Whoops, sorry, I guess I'm not going through. Junpei 7 and Snake simply stood at a loss for what they should do. Next. What do we do now? He glanced over at Snake's wrist. Sure enough, he could see the two bracelet on Snake's wrist. The three of us can't make a digital root of nine. Yeah, we just get five. Oh. Oh. We take Clovers. We're stuck here, then. Oh. Hey, I just remembered something. Seven began patting his pockets as if we were checking to see if anyone in the helmet. What? Oh, did he steal? What is it? I, uh... I found something earlier. Don't tell me. What did you find? Don't tell me. It's it's Clover's yes. bracelet. He finally found the pocket he wanted, and his hand drove into it. Seven pulled out something round and metal. Oh my! Him and Snake. A bracelet. There was no mistaking the number glowing at them from the face. It was like a cartoon eye. Zero. <gasps> Zero's bracelet. Huh. What did you say? Yeah, he's Zero. Are you saying that Seven has the number Zero bracelet? He indeed does. That mean, can that mean four of us can go? Um. You two. Well, not me. Me and... No, oh, you're dead. All of us. All of us. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Where did you get that? Captain's quarters. Snake's corner's question was innocent enough, but if he learned the truth, he'd been able to see. He would have noticed. Seven look away. Clover gave it to me. Ooh. She did. Yeah. How did she come by it? Well, she found it. You see, on the other side of door one, a deck, a captain's quarters. Mm-hmm. She 
she asked me to hold on to it because it was too big and bulky for her to be lugging around. That's fair. He's lying. Junpei could tell right away that Seven wasn't telling the truth. You even told us earlier. I haven't actually looked at it yet. I didn't want to disturb the crime scene, you know? Basic stuff, though. Uh-huh. Well, I did borrow one thing. Yeah, that's what it is. That's fair. Alright, Junpei. Nice knowing you. Uh, Wait, what? Yep. Seven and two is zero is nine. Come on, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Still, just in case, I want to make sure the zero bracelet gets picked up by the red. Snake, give me a hand, all right? Literally. Without waiting for a response, he started walking toward the door. Jinpei and Snakes followed him quietly. Before long, they found themselves in front of the larger of the two doors. Seven and Snake put their palms on the red. Once they'd done that, Seven put the number zero bracelet on the scanner panel as well. The third asterisk appeared. Yeah, and then you just put you put June and Santa, and then I make a sacrifice. Yep. I just need to pull the lever on the door to open. What? Error? Uh, why isn't it opening? Um, well, the third asterisk lit up, so it must have registered the zero bracelet. Maybe it isn't actually zero. What? Huh? What? That bracelet may not actually produce the number zero when scanned. Huh. That is what I'm saying. Hmm. Hmm. Why don't we try a few different combinations? Perhaps we can determine what number that bracelet actually contains. Interesting. Oh, got it! Pay nodded. They decided to use the following combination. Oh, great. Um. If I got it, but when was the zero used? Didn't he? Or he had the nine. Would it matter? Just think it should pay seven. Five. So it's either whether it's. Hold on. Whether it's um four, jump a seven, three. Wait. So whether it's hold on. Yeah. So whether it's four, whether it's snake jump a jump a seven, snake jump a. Whether it's two. Or whether it's six. Do we think it's two, four, or six? Well, snake, June, clover. If clover used it, I'm just gonna say I think it's two. Let's try snake, me, and the bracelet. If this combination works, then the number for this bracelet is two. Mm -hmm. Huh. Didn't open. Didn't open. Guess it's not two. Then. So I continued. All right, well we go up. Let's, Let's see if it's four. All three of us and the bracelet. Snake and Jimmy seven fourteen. If this combination works, then the number for this bracelet is four. Then open. Then this bracelet is then. So it has Let's to try be me six. seven and the bracelet. Jinpei seven. All right. If this combination works, then the number for this bracelet is six. Scan in the bracelets. Huh. It opened. So it's a six. Yes. So it would seem. Oh, Pirates of the Caribbean, that's what it's from. Seven clearly had thought their experimentation wouldn't produce anything useful, but while I confused. Snake was his usual calm and smug. The door slid closed. Junpei's forehead furrowed as he thought. That means the bracelet is actually six. Huh. Wait. So... Six? 
six, five, three, seven. If we all just kill Snake, we can all leave. But how is that possible? The display on the bracelet clearly shows a zero. Oh, what is that? Suddenly, from somewhere far beneath them, they heard the creak and groan of tearing metal. With it came the sound of water pouring. Oh, it's just the ship sinking. Parts of the recently been dry. Oh man, that's not good. I guess our time's just about up, huh? Oh no. At any rate, we know now that the door can be opened. Let's go! But, Snake, are you sure? Oops. I guess we just have to get out of here. Yeah. You know that only Junpei and I can go through this way. Oh. You needn't worry. I have a solution to this problem. Hmm. Considering that I am zero, I can just leave to My the last door. resort. But if now is not the time for last resorts, then when? He makes a good point. Last? Resort? Yes, it's off the beach of Costa Rica. It's very, very lovely. You should visit it sometime. I swear to God, if we have a whole like, ah, oh, but June and Santa, we can't leave them behind. Here we go. Still have to find the dead, eh? Guess we found the dead pretty easily. Just sneaking in with us. Say so round seven spark. I would admit you really surprised me there, kid. I couldn't figure out how the hell you were gonna get out of that one. Huh. How come you didn't do that right off the bat? As I told you, it was a last resort. What? Had I used it at the beginning of the game, I would have come under a great deal of suspicion. Oh, he has his own numbers. I imagine that most people would have taken it to mean that I was zero. Once they'd convinced themselves of that, I wasn't optimistic about my chances of making it out of here alive, let alone unscathed. I still think he is maybe zero. Wait. Yeah, so I'm still running with them. Alright, cool. I felt it best to play my cards close to the chest, as it were. Hmm. That way, if I were in a situation where there was nothing else I could do, I'd have a little trick up my sleeve. Does he have another bracelet? Or I'd something? just take my bracelet off. Oh. Right. I, I I proposed that earlier. Just take his arm off. The snake's plan had been simple but effective. He just take off his prosthetic arm. Simply removed his bracelet. How to jump a? It looks as though Snake has simply crushed the bones of his hand until they were small enough to fit through the wristband. Of course, that would have been practically impossible, so how he did that? My brother's left arm is Yep. It's not like a normal person's arm. It's fake. It's not a real arm. Snake had slid the bracelet off and tossed it into the coffin. I know this is kind of a weird thing to say, but I'm glad that's the fake arm. Yeah. You don't have to be afraid of the door if you don't got a bracelet. That's true. You are correct. Walk through the door easily, without authenticating. Stopped at the other side, unscathed. Began running down the hall alongside Seven and Jumpy. But how would it detect a heart rate if it's on a prosthetic arm? I kept running for a while longer and eventually came up on a set of steps leading downward on the right side of the hallway. I stopped and peered down the staircase. I think these stairs connect to the bottom deck. Doesn't look like it's underwater. They nodded quickly to one another and jogged down the stairs. It took only a few minutes to make their way to the bottom deck. There was a single hallway in front of them. At the end was a single Let's go door. through that door. Don't see what else we're gonna do. Jumpe threw it open. Interesting. Inside was a massive iron gate. A plate was affixed to the top of it. Huh. He read incinera oh my god. We use the incinerator. On Alice. To unfreeze her. Incinerator? Oh my. 
That doesn't sound very pleasant. Do you see a lever near the gate, perhaps? Yeah, right over here. How did you know that? Well, I'd be happy to regale you with the story. I imagine it should only take half a day or so. <laughs> Long story short, he's been on this ship before. Uh, hmm. And that's how he knows it so well. Jinpei grumbled, gave Snake a dirty look, and jogged over to the level. If you pull it, the door ought to open. Got it. No way we're escaping. Pull the lever down. With the rumble of an ancient motor, the door opened. I am... Ah, oh, see... I don't, am I on? I feel like I'm on the right ending. But then what about that? The rumble of an ancient mirror, the door opened. There was no need to hold back and no time to hesitate. They pushed their way inside. The incinerator? <laughs> Standing in front of them by Ace and Lotus. Ace still held the revolver in his hand was still pressed hard against Lotus's temple. A small dark bruise had begun to form near the tip. <laughs> Even from several yards away, Junpei could see that Lotus was shaking. She was terrified. But perhaps more interesting was what Junpei saw behind her. Nine. Another number nine door. What? Why? That's Why is the there door. another one? The door stops Junpei in his tracks. It simply shouldn't have been there. As his brain finally began to consider why, the whine of a warning klaxon filled the air, drowning out any thought. Warning. Nope. Warning. Emergency incineration command. Huh? It's been acknowledged. Are they all going to incinerate us? No way. Automatic incineration will take place in nine minutes. Oh my god, this guy. Please evacuate the incinerator immediately. Oh my. How exciting. You've run quite a show here, Zero. Hmm. Terrifying smile twisted Ace's face. What's the matter? Too frightened to understand? Here, let me explain. It's said that the incineration system is about to activate. In nine minutes, this room will be engulfed in flame. Hmm. Who are you? Oh. You don't recognize me? I'm hurt. It's me, Snake. I'm very, if Snake isn't Zero, or he's Zero with a good purpose, I think I love him. If not... I'm Snake? Oh yes, you are alive. <laughs> I'm afraid your bizarre style had me confused. <laughs> I'm quite glad to see that you're alive. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Here's his voice didn't change. Snake ground his teeth. If you don't mind my asking, how did you get here? Snake, Junpei, Seven. The three of you couldn't have opened a door with a knife. <laughs> Guess that's all it'll see. Did you use Clover's bracelet, perhaps? Oh no. What? Oh, that could have worked. Ah, well. Your reaction suggests that you did not. Uh, hold on. Why did you think we'd have Clover's bracelet? About that. Oh, his chest tied. They haven't told you? No. Told me what? Hmm. Clearly not. Normally I would take some time and enjoy the moment. But I'm afraid my time is at a premium just now. Oh yeah. I'll have to make this quick. She's dead. Clover. Don't do it, Ace! Keep your goddamn mouth shut! Clover. I said stop it! He is Don't dead. listen to him, Snake. Jimbe could feel his voice going hoarse, but Snake didn't listen. What happened to, him. to Clover? Ace looked at him. The corner of his mouth curled into the hook of a cruel smile. Clover died. Ah. <sighs> the color left Snake's face. He shook his head weakly. No, that's not true. That's impossible. It's a lie. It has to be a lie. Okay, Coco. Oh, it's quite true. I can assure you of that. I killed her myself. Oh. What? <gasps> what? I'm sorry. Did I stutter? I killed her. What? What? <sighs> Why? Your eyes? Snake's face twisted into a mask of rage, watered red rising from his to dot his pale skin. His entire body shook. 
He looked at Junpei, disturbingly like a demon. I would have rather she died with less suffering. A bullet in her brain, perhaps, would have been ideal. Unfortunately, that would have made quite a bit of noise. Circumstances being what they were, I was forced to settle for the knife. The one the ninth man had, you remember. <laughs> I believe I caught her just below the shoulder blade. I was rather lucky, in fact. My first thrust went right between her ribs. Her flesh was so soft. My knife slid in so easily. There was no resistance. That feeling was... I confess, I feel rather excited. It is a powerful memory. Someday, perhaps, I hope I can feel it again. Oh, God. Incineration will begin in seven minutes. Jesus, we've waffled for two minutes. I'm going to kill you. This music kind of reminds me of Subnautica. And I know this is not the time to say it, but... Snake's words were a guttural growl, barely audible. What was that? But he, uh, we just, it's, it's literally a miracle he can see. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Ah, so you are going to kill me. Please do. Come now. I'm waiting. Don't do it. Don't listen to him, Snake. Stop it, kid. He's screwing with your head. Is there a problem? What are you waiting for, boy? Don't you want me to send you to join your sister? Oof. Don't! The snake! Don't do it! Snake! Snake! The snake could no longer hear them. The snake could no longer hear anything. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, he's gonna get a shot. The snake moved like a bolt of lightning. His scream echoed through the incineration chamber, full of rage and despair. Snake! 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 There it is. Oh my but he's, he's, he's let go of Lotus. <laughs> Another scream filled the room. It was Lotus. She ran across the room towards Jumbei, her eyes wide with Lotus! Terror. Hurry! This way! Snake's ill-fated attack had loosened Ace grip on her, and she'd made a run for it. Shittery 7 and Jumpa and duck behind them. <laughs> Incineration will begin in five minutes. Give me the woman. <laughs> well, what a line. He raised the gun. I need her. Without her bracelet. Uh oh, too bad, so I will sad. Be unable to open this door. Yep. Quickly now! I don't have time for your shenanigans. In the center of the room, Snake's body lay eerily still. He looked like a human lava, prone and vulnerable on the floor. I see. Then it would seem I have no choice. The rest of you must die as well. Fortunately, I have five bullets left. Huh. One for Junpei, another for Lotus, <laughs> and the last three for that lump of idiotic man you call Seven. Three? That's low ball. I will take Lotus's body with me. And leave this room. Incineration will begin in four minutes. Well, it looks as though our time together is at an end. Hmm. I rather enjoyed playing with you. Likewise. Damn it! Junpei could see Ace's finger tighten. He could see it begin to squeeze down on the trigger. His body tense, preparing for the catastrophic impact of hot lead against human flesh. Goodbye. And it happened? Then it happened. Kill you! What? Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Snake stood up? What? No! That's impossible! What? The first time, Ace's composure broke. With obvious effort, Snake lunged forward one step closer to Ace, then another. He looked, for all the world, like a zombie. I'll kill you! I'll kill you! His voice was the mournful wailing of the undead. Stay, stay away from me! Get back! Stop! If you come any closer, I'll, I'll... Get away from me! Little by little, Ace was retreating. <laughs> Snake didn't stop. Are we at the ending? 
Still no. He continued his stiff, inexorable approach. His eyes twin pools of pure fury. Listen to me! I said, don't come any closer! Shit! You bastard! Oh my god, he's just used all five bullets. Ace's revolver leapt five times. Five times the air in the incinerator was split by the crack of a bullet. His next body twist twitched as five clouds of blood and torn flesh leapt into the air across his body. Fine pink mist drifted from his body and disappeared. Junpei didn't have time to ponder what that meant before. And then his strength was gone. His legs crumbled and his broken and battered body slid to the floor. Incineration will begin in three minutes. Someone's used all their bullets. <laughs> Finally, you're... But Snake wasn't done? I'll kill you. Even as the pool of blood beneath him grew, he began to move. He half crawled, half slid toward Ace. One bloody arm wrapped itself around Ace's leg. You won't get away. Oh my god. The other gripped his thigh with strength that would have been long gone. You, you son of a bitch! You... You're a monster! It takes one to no one. Get off me! Let me go, damn you! He kicked at Snake with his free leg, driving his foot into Snake's face, his arm, his shoulder. Ah! Ah! It made no difference. Snake refused to release him. Once a snake... Once a snake had ensnared his prey, it rarely doesn't no. release it. This is... It. Ace. That's such a good line. We're going to... Burn to death together. Ooh. What? Incineration will begin in. Can we get out of here? Me and. Wait. Um. Jinpei. Damn. Damn. Ooh. Two minutes. Me and Seven can go. Damn it! Damn you! Wait, we have the thing. Wait, what's the thing? It's it's six, right? Five, six, seven, eight. Damn. We can all go with Ace. Oh, <gasps> wait. No, that wouldn't work, would it? We can't get Ace's bracelet. Get off! Let me go, you monster! Okay, okay, okay. Look. Think about it this way. Lemon Demon My reference. company owns a wonderful hospital. It has excellent doctors. You're, you're not wounded too seriously. I, I'm sure they can fix you up easily. Six gunshot wounds. You don't have to die. You can be saved. Just let me go. Pathetic. <laughs> hmm. Begging for your <coughs> life. Simon and Lotus began to speak. Jinbei could hear tears in their voices, and their words were strained. Snake, that's enough! You can stop now! Yes! He's right, Snake! You've done enough! Come on, no, yes. let's go! Let's get out of here! You have to come with us! We have to leave together! Snake turned toward them. He coughed, and blood splattered across the floor. Then he smiled, a sad sort of smile. I apologize, but I'm afraid I can't do that. You'd best forget about me. You need to leave soon. I'm going to take him with me. Shut up! Be quiet! <laughs> I couldn't save Clover. My sister died because of me. Perhaps this will begin to atone for that. Perhaps. In the afterlife, she can forgive me. Okay, correct you. Now go. Go now. Then do what? You have to go. Incineration will begin in two. Oh, no. no. What God do we do? Damn it! Shit! We're out of time! We gotta go! Go no. where? So ran towards the exit. Look, just followed him. But you bad. Jumbe couldn't uh. move. There were white lines down Snake's cheeks where his tears washed the blood away. He was broken, body and soul, a 
and Junpei felt as though half his own heart had been torn out. His eyes stung, and he tried to desperately swallow to clear the lump in his throat. Junpei, what are you doing? You have to get out of here now! Junpei's chest tightened, pulled out by anger, misery, and a cold feeling of emptiness. Pure emotion surged through his heart, alongside the torrent of blood. He could feel it building, a tremendous wave growing taller and taller and taller. And then it broke, crashing down with the thunderous force of his shaken, unprepared Snake! mind. Snake! 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 Jumpy's rational mind was gone. He was driven by instinct now, and launched himself across the floor at Snake and Ace. Or he tried to. Wait! Don't be an idiot, Junpei! Yeah, what is he doing? He felt a hand grab him from behind. It was seven. Before he had time to react, the larger man had pinned Junpei's arms to his side, and was hauling his bodily backward toward the no! door. No! I have to help Snake! Oh. Snake! Snake! <laughs> Get off of me! Let me go! I mean, they're trying. They're making so many Metal Gear references, like, come on. Incineration will begin in nine seconds. Oh, good, perfect chance to use nine. Seven, six. Damn it! I don't get a choice, kid. Don't blame me for this, all right? No. Has he just left me? Five, four. Oh, is he taking me? Three, two. Uh, oh. What? One. Zero. What? Gates two and three are locked down. Beginning incineration. Did I get taken out? Jinpei felt Seven's fist bury itself deep in his stomach, then his legs turned to mush. Seven scooped him up in the same motion and leapt through the door. Slammed shut behind them. Okay. Junkei's Junpei struggled to shaky feet. He glanced over to see Lotus only a short distance away. Junpei ran to the door. That was a small window cut into it, of course there was. Inside he could see Ace and Snake. Damn you all! Why? Why? Why me? I don't deserve this! SME! SME Zero! Why? Why? Jesus. Zero! Zero! Kablam. Oh my god. Oh my god. Zero! Jesus Christ, just like a dang and rob execution. Well... We are... Like... 43 minutes into this episode. I have to leave it here. And whatever else happens will have to happen in the next episode. See you whenever that happens.